And it's not only the subatomic world, by the way. We have an increasing number of quantum technologies that are really based on this behavior, the quantum computers being a good example. And so you see that this is not just something that you can say, well, we don't need to think about it really because it's in the world of atoms. Because we're using that behavior now in technologies. One of the big changes actually that's happened in, in teaching quantum mechanics in universities over the last few decades is that um, it was always when I learned it, so it's back even in the 1990s, um, it was common to teach it historically. So you go through the things that we've talked about, you go through the photoelectric effect and the stretch of atoms, you get to Niels Bohr and his early explanations of, of how atoms might work, following on from Ernest Rutherford in Manchester detecting the atomic nucleus. And that's so this idea that an atom is a, is a nucleus, a dense positive charge. It, it wasn't known exactly what the structure was at that time. Uh, with electrons, let's say, orbiting in inverted commas around it, so that there's a picture of almost like a solar system, but it was known that doesn't work because you have charged particles moving in the vicinity of other charged particles, and that means that they radiate and they would not be stable. And 